I want you guys to get the great concepts of it that way and show that, for example, that if it's not tested right, it's, you're going to miss a lot of the things going on. So just understand, I'll de- I, I go in great detail on my testing and the education that way, but understand I can't cover any, everything. Because there's, heck, I, actually that would be, even when I teach doctors, because uh, even like this morning, um, I'm blessed enough to actually have a consulting company where I teach doctors, medical doctors, naturopaths, chiropractors, nutritionists from all over the country. Well, we had my training call with them all this morning. And so they're kind of recorded. They're going up online and stuff. Now, these are just for doctors. So I said I teach them a little bit differently. I teach you guys. So understand I can't cover everything, even though I'll try to cover like great detail. All right? Now, a couple questions for you. Um, you think a little differently right now, don't you already, about it? Okay, you have to look at it. Remember, this is the key right here. This is still the key to everything that way. You have to understand it from the Swiss watch principle. Because if you do not look at it from the Swiss watch principle, you'll never gain the concept of how the thyroid's affected by other things, okay? Now, here, this is the biggest thing. What is the number one cause of all thyroid problems? You're thinking toxicity, you're thinking this, this. No, guess what? Does anybody know what it is? What is it? Nope. Autoimmune. Autoimmune. That means, for example, where your immune system has now actually turned on itself and started destroying its own tissue. Now think about that. You know, it's bad enough having hypothyroidism where the thyroid doesn't work. But imagine the gland that controls all of your metabolism and all of your functions starts to now attack. And the funny part is this. It accounts for about 70 to 80% of thyroid problems. Now, here's one thing. This is not my research. This is all medical research. But one thing is this. If they can't drug it, what won't they do? They won't test it. Okay? And I got some great kind of, you know, I hate to call a person a case, but let's just call it for that purpose, for gate cases to show you. Now, the one thing that comes up is this, no drug, no test. Now, let's look at some of the antibodies. Now, once again, I put these in your notes so you can go home and look these up. That's why I put these for you. Because here, when you actually see my blood request form for people to get done, you can go home and Google them. Now, I'm going to show you. Let's look at the number one antibody. It's called TPO, or the thyroid peroxidase antibody. So what I did was this. I always like doing these things. I like to pull up the medical stuff. Has anybody here ever heard of Mayo Clinic before? Do you see what I'm saying? So the funny part is this is not like this is my stuff, but let me just read you a little excerpt from it. It says, the presence of thyroid peroxidase antibodies in your blood suggests that the what? Here's the big word. What does it say right there? The cause. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me ask you a question. Is the reason why that people have thyroid problems is because they lack synthroid or levothyroxine in their body? See how dumb it is when you ask that kind of question from, from the carpenter viewpoint? Do you see what I'm saying? That makes no sense. So what you do now is this, that the cause of your thyroid disease is due to autoimmune. Autoimmune. So the, the idea is this. Most of your thyroid problems, are they thyroid problems? 80% of them are what? Immune. Your immune system. Can anybody tell me where most of your immune system resides in your body? In your gut. So could your, could your food affect your thyroid function then? Now you know why I focus on daily habits so importantly that way. Now that why when, you, when I see people go to McDonald's, which as you can see my little demonstration, McDonald's right there, you guys see it? Where that McDonald's has been sitting there for years and guess what happens? It's never been touched. And guess what happens? Not even the bugs will touch it. You know why the bugs won't touch it? Because they're smart. Because they say, whoa, we're chemically sensitive. We don't want that crap. But what do we do? No joke. You want to see something funny? McDonald's down here on Velt. I just drive there and there's lines around there. You know what I'm thinking in the back of my head? Job security. Okay. <laughs> no, but it's true because our habits that way are so big, you know? And I actually have doctors tell people that, guess what? Your nutrition has nothing to do with it. Really? Well, you ask the fire department, what are they going to tell you? You know what I'm saying? So here, now this was a actually young boy, okay? Now the funny part was this. Their free T3 and T- free T4 were what? Normal. But their Thyroid peroxidase was highly positive. Normal range, you want to be less than 35, he was at 179.2. They're wondering why this little boy was degenerating. And the funny part is this, guess what? You know what the sad part is this? Their mother came in first with thyroid problems. And their child is degenerating and getting worse and worse and worse. He's 12, year, 12 years old. Yep, 12 years old. And the funny part, I'm going, wait, wait. Remember how I told you mama can pass down thyroid problems? Mama doesn't pass thyroid problems down. What does mama pass down? Her what? her immune system. Remember, mama didn't pass you the bad gene. 
Mom passed you immune system when you passed through, and guess who got it? You did. You know that part? So this mom, guess what? I said, has he ever had his antibodies tested? Well, no. Because why? Because it didn't make any sense yet. So we test them. Look what happened. Very damaged, very high, okay? Now, there's another antibody that we have there. It's called the anti thyroglobin antibody. It's also called the TGB antibody. It's also called the thyroglobin antibody. There's many words for it that way. So what I did is just pulled up the, anybody ever heard of the National Institute of Health? Yeah, they're the medical library. Now let me read this to you. It's kind of cool. Why is this test performed? This test helps detect possible thyroid problems. The antibodies can lead to destruction of the thyroid gland. Wait, 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 wait. It can actually attach onto that nice little thyrocyte and damage it and kill it. So imagine this. Imagine you have a storage unit, and they have 100, 100 little storage units there, and your immune system comes and smashes every one of them, and then eventually you run out of what? 100-day supply. You know what I'm saying? And that gland will start to do what? When it starts to degenerate, what, what does it turn into? Say it? Calcify. It'll start to calcify. That's why when you swallow, you feel a what? A lump in your throat. Okay? And it gets worse based on the demand of your thyroid. So here, let me see a question. Wait, let's do this. Does, does this right here say Dr. Flynn? Does this right here say Dr. Flynn? See, so when I hear this BS from their doctor say that's Dr. Flynn's concepts, no, it's not. Now, where I'm very proud of, and this is where I'm very proud of, is when I was kind of going through all schooling and stuff like that, and long, long time ago, and you know, nobody's putting this into clinical practice. They're not. And so I got to teach, I got to teach doctors. Heck, I was taught down at Texas Medical College about this stuff, and they love it because that gives them an answer of what's wrong. You follow me on that? But when they get in clinical practice, guess what happens? Who are they controlled by? And guess what? But guess what? These tests are done. They're simplistic. They're easy, okay? Now, let me give you an example. So I actually, no joke, I actually, uh, this came from a buddy of mine who's the largest chiropractor in the world. He's an unbelievable guy. Um, he just, now imagine this. This guy's a machine. He adjusts about 2,500 people a week. <laughs> he's, he's awesome. I mean, he's just, I mean, it's, he's just a great guy. And so he does, when people come up with other problems, he'll send them to me. Now, here's one thing. Look at this one. So this person, for example, was having some massive problems. So he said, ah, doc, guess what? I'll adjust him, but I need you to take care of, care of her. Because why? Because her, her, she's, just get, she's sick. And so he tests her levels. Look at her T4, extremely low. Look at her T3, extremely low. You think this woman is having a good day? But imagine this. There's the antithyroid gland antibody. That is the antibody that attacks and damages and destroys the thyroid. Normal range, is be, normal range, you want to be, won't be above 40. She was at 3,000. Have you guys ever had a cold before? Did you ever get fatigued out from a cold? That's when just a little bug comes in, our immune system reacts to get rid of it. What happens if your own immune system that's made to protect you now is damaging you at a what? A 3,000 time rate. You see what I'm saying? And the fiber is this. She saw the doc down there because the doctor told her she was what? Normal. You know what I'm saying? Because here's what happens. Does she have a disease yet, a fire yet? Not in their estimate. Don't see any pathology. Remember, they can eventually, they can actually even see this. I say this all the time. If I see calcifications on a thyroid on where? On an x-ray? Guess what? So if I see that, I'll say, listen, go to your doc and get an ultrasound. And they'll say, yep, three millimeters calcification. What we're going to do now is monitor it. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, it gets better. Look at her other antibody, her thyroid peroxidase. 0 to 34, she's at 377. Now, this was done down in Texas, okay? This is not a joke. I have people from travel all over the world come here. Because why? Because I'm so smart? No. It's just that people test properly, people will search out your care. Do you follow me on that? That's why when you see what, what this person came from Ohio, this person came from here, why? Because if you do the right things, it makes sense to people. Now, here's a question for you guys. Can you go home and look all this stuff up? Yes. Because then when you go in your doctor, you say, Doc, I need this. They're going to argue with you like crazy. Do you know they hate the internet? They hate it. See, I love it. I want you guys to know everything. I want you to show you everything. I'll sit down and explain it to you, won't I? Okay? Because then when you see those labs, you go, holy crap. Okay? Now, it gets better. You guys remember the Facebook post I just did? Here's another 26-year-old. Look at this. Her thyroid proxy antibody, once again, less than nine. She was at 900. Now, this woman actually got referred to me by my buddy who's a chiropractor in Appleton. Okay? Now, the great thing is, for example, she's like, listen, she's told by her doctor massively, you're, you're normal, you're normal, you're normal, you're normal, yet she's doing this health-wise. 
She's gaining weight. She's fatigued. She can't get going. She has brain fog. You follow me? Sound familiar? Well, it ended up happening very simple as this. So we tested her properly, and she's like, oh my goodness, now you want to know the funny part? This is the great part. So the same doctor all of a sudden saw labs came across. They called her up personally and said, what? Get in here. We have to drug you as quickly as possible. <laughs> no joke. Now, why? Because like, you know, they're like, they, they're freaking out. Do you know how bad this is? Do you know how bad this is? She's like, yeah, you told me I was normal. You know what I'm saying? Now, the one thing is this. It's like, she's like, no, Dr. Flynn found this. He knows what he's doing. I'm going to stick with him. And she's already doing wonderful. Okay? Now, is that normal yet? Heck no. You know how long? It's not a joke. You know how long that will probably take me to get that down to normal, less than nine? Two to three years. Because why? I have to start rebuilding that body. You follow me on that? But what do, what do most of you guys want? You'll be very disappointed. I promise you, I can rebuild your house. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? Take some time. Can you put out a fire pretty quickly? Yes, you can, but take some time to rebuild the house. Okay? Now, oh, this is, here we go. Christina. Okay? Now remember, she is a nurse. She does this all the time. And then people come here. Why? Do you think I'm ever, do you think any, I was any of you guys' first choice? No, you come here because nothing else works. So therefore, what happens is this. So Christina came in, and guess what? I said, now remember, she was first. So I said, her daughter was, I'll show your daughter's labs in a second. So she was first. So she came in, and she was going through all the major problems and stuff like that. And she, guess what? So all of her hormone levels were what? Normal, 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 normal. So they told her she was what? So this, they even tested a little bit. Now, they didn't test all these. I requested more of these. But then guess what they didn't test on her? Her auto what? Antibodies. And look what happened. Very elevated. Okay? Also, too, her TGB was elevated. We're going to get to that marker in a minute. But look at this. So her auto antibodies were measured. So all of a sudden, very short time, so she starts getting better. Her brain fog clears up. She actually starts thinking properly. Her memory got better. And she wants something. She goes, my daughter's sick. She's losing hair. Now, remember, she's 16 years old at the time. She's losing hair. She's extremely fatigued. She can't get going. She can't get up in the morning. What does that sound like? So they said, listen. They said, take her home and be nice to her. Well, I'm thinking, holy man. Wait, 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 wait. So if mom has an autoimmune disease, then what can possibly happen? You want to see? Guess what her test was? Same antibody positive. You follow me on that? Same antibody. So now what happened is this. Now what triggered that was she got a, a flu vaccine. And the heavy metal triggered the immune system. It triggered her autoimmune disease. And it happened after she got the flu shot. So here's a question for you. I will give you this one on this one. What do you think I did for her to actually help her get better? I detoxed the heavy metal poisons out of her body from that vaccine. Imagine that, hey? See, they are one of the number one causes of our damage that way, the vaccine issue. And that's what ended up happening. And they told mom, Christina, to just be nice to her. It's not a joke. I can't make this crap up. I can't. This is what I see every day. You know what I'm saying? That's what people are like, why do you get so frustrated sometimes? Come and, I, I invite any of you guys. Come and sit, you know, you guys see doctors come here all the time, they've been here. Doctors follow me around constantly that way. Actually, it's kind of funny. It, it'd blow your mind what you see in a day. And then people wonder why I get so ticked off at some of this stuff. Not mad as far as like at anybody, just going frustrated that women are coming here crying and sobbing. You know what happened today? Jessica, what happened today? A woman called up what? Sobbing because she can't even drink water. She's coming here from Minnesota. She can't drink water. She throws up violently. Okay, so she called up Throb and said, can I talk to Dr. Flynn? He helped my friend, blah, 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 blah. And she's sobbing. This water, guys, water. And all the doctors tell her she's what? Normal, okay? This is what happens. This is what people are having. They're suffering. Now, here's what happens. Here was Christina's, I know it's hard to see with the light, but the thyroid sits right there. So that's why when you see it calcified. So being a chiropractor, the one thing I love about being a chiropractor, if you take an x-ray of the neck, what can you sometimes see? Cervical, you can see that damage. And that's why when you see, see that right there? See that calcified thyroid there? Okay. Now, <laughs> do you remember the first, uh, let's, let's do this really quickly. I got to do this. Sorry about this. I got to do this really quick. Remember this little note right here that I got right at the beginning of our talk here? She relayed to me that you performed an x-ray in your office and told her that her thyroid was calcified and, and that her thyroid was not working properly. I just wanted to clarify that a plain x-ray is minimal to no value imaging the thyroid gland. You idiot. Honestly, I'm sorry. You're being an idiot. Uh, you can, here, do me a favor tonight. Go home and Google this. Calcification of a thyroid. Have any of you guys ever done that? 
And what do you see? Yes. And what do you find, Mary? Thank you. Do you follow me? See, remember, this is not my stuff. You can do it yourself. Because then you go home and Google it. Why do you think that some of you guys just sit down and show you this? If I find it diagnostically, and then I'll say, listen, guess what? Go get an ultrasound if you want to. You don't have to, but go get it. And what do they find? Calcifications. See, an x-ray is not meant to diagnose thyroid problems. It's only there if the thyroid's a what? Problem. Do you follow me on that? And if it's a problem, it'll show up. If it's not, you won't see it, okay? Yeah. Well, remember this, guys. I forgot, I forgot to tell you this. Whenever you read a medical website, they're always acting like you're going to die, okay? So just remember, they are always talk fires. Fires, you're always going to die. So just remember that. And it's okay. You know, that's what their job is. So they have to put on how severe it is. Because they do. Right away, if you look at, read about it after you type it in, it talks about thyroid cancers and thyroid nodules and we got to cut it out. And people call me up freaked out. Okay? Just understand, if I would have saw it and I saw a nodule, guess where I'd have send you? I'd send you to get it looked at. Okay? Now, it gets better. Oops. One second. I just have to, do you guys remember that nice little handout you guys have? Get that, grab that for a quick second. We're not going to use it yet, but it's coming up here. Jessica, could you grab me one of those? Thank you, Mary. Now, this isn't this one yet, but I got to tell you a story. No, it's perfect. No, no, thank you. Thank you, Mary. Um, one thing that I wanted to show you is this is, I, I don't have permission to use her name, but because uh, I haven't asked her yet for this, but I know she'd give it to me if I wanted it. But this was probably, this was just recent. And so I want you guys to show you what happens, Okay. This actually, this actually woman is actually a medical doctor's wife that they sent me, okay? Now, the reason why I use this is because you're going to find this funny, okay? So all of a sudden, she comes into me, and she's going through a lot of health problems. And imagine she's going through a lot of fatigue, a lot of, can't lose weight, do, you know, the whole kind of thing that way. So I said, okay, listen, I was going through, I'm like, whoa, 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 you have a lot of autoimmune disorders, okay? So we tested her, and guess what we found? We found three of them. We found the thyroid peroxidase antibody, we found the thyroid globin antibody, and guess what else we found? ANA. So she had what? Starts with an L. Lupus. Okay? And she was having massive fertility problems and massive just she couldn't get pregnant anything. Okay? So they, so I said, okay, listen. Now, the funny part is her doctor goes, how the heck did you find that? And I said, well, Dr. Flynn found it. Okay? And because it was pretty easy. No joke. I was like, well, that's easy. She's got autoimmune disorders. Because I guess when you see him so much, it's just common. So, all right. So guess what? So she's under my care. Now she's doing amazing. Life is changing. Hormonal problems are going away. Everything like that. And it, it gets better, okay? So all of a sudden, she's going through all the process, and, and then I'm like, now, what's my motto? We don't guess, we what? But what do I love to do? Thank you. So I love to retest. So I sent her right back to her doctor that actually took the original test. I was like, wow, holy man, okay? Now, what'd they do? They freaked out when, she saw, when they saw these levels. They wanted to drug her like crazy. And guess what her, her husband does for a living? And they kind of fought about it a little bit. And then she decided, uh-uh, not doing that. You know what I'm saying? And here it gets better. So all of a sudden, I said, okay, listen, let's, I'm going to send you back to the, the original doc. So all of a sudden, I get a letter in the mail. <laughs> Guys, there isn't a week that goes by I don't get some hate mail. It's not a joke, okay? But let me read this to you. This is kind of awesome. Now, remember, this was just in, in December. I recently received an order from your office for laboratory blood work for your patient. With due to respect, may I inquire what your scope of practice is? Yeah, fixing the people that you can't. See what I'm saying? Fixing the people you're telling are normal. You say, oh, it's arrogant. No, it's not, guys. Saying, listen, they wouldn't be coming to me if you guys knew what you were doing. Okay? Now, it gets better. There are here. These are complicated tests. Some of them, I believe, duplicate that typically require advanced medical training, medical degree to in interpret properly. Oh, man, you're not going to like what I say this. You idiot, who do you think found those things? You know what I'm saying? It's not an arrogant statement. It's just going, listen, this is, I'm, you really, honestly, this woman's been in your care for 20 years, and all of a sudden she's getting worse and worse and worse. Here, I mean sincerely, if you're under the care of a doctor and you have a cancer, you should go punch him in the face. Because why? They were there to keep you what? BS. They've taught you, oh, it would fall apart. We'll try to fix it and put it together. You know what I'm saying? And we think that that's health care. That's ridiculous. And then they have the arrogance to send me this letter? Okay, it gets better. I wanted to make you aware that this patient recently had a very thorough workup at the rheumatologist's office. Yes, why did she go there? Because when I found out she had ANA lupus antibody, that's when you guys sent her there, okay? Which they, she didn't do her drugs. As well as a consultation with a tertiary care specialist from Madison. 
You remember what I'm saying? If you go to a different specialist, you go to Madison, you go to Children's Hospital, what do you find? The same doctors that are there. What, what's Mayo Clinic good at? Finding fires. What happens if you go to Mayo Clinic and you don't have a fire? Nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? Just because you're good at a fire department doesn't mean they're going to find out or figure out what's wrong with you. See, that's the thing. They're sitting there going, our doctors are smart. No, they're not. They're meant to train to find fires. You know what I'm saying? And they may be good at it. They may have all the tools in the world to do it. But let me tell you, just by treating a fire doesn't get a person back to normal. Okay? Wait, it gets better. Here we go. Repeating these laboratory tests might be considered a duplication of effort, and in this age of intense insurance company scrutiny of payments, no joke, you guys, if you want to read this, come up here, okay, could well result in the patient being billed for a substantial amount of money. Do you think the woman cared? Do you think she cared? No, okay. Also, I would not want to give her false hope that some of these results in this battery test may be an answer to her complaints. Lastly, I want to ensure you that she is having serial thyroid as well as vitamin D monitored in this office. Please feel free to call me if you have any questions. Oh, I called her ass right away. <laughs> oh, I have some concerns. Okay. So guess what happened? So, because here's what ended up happening. She did blood work and then sent me this thing. So she thinks like in her own arrogance, like she's going to scare me. Remember, I got more degrees than she do. She does. I got more. <laughs> she do. I got... Frustrated, but but here's what thing, and actually my degrees are what can figure this out. Okay, it's not an arrogant statement, guys. It's what the reality is. I'm a carpenter. Do you follow me? That's my job. I'm not asking to do their job. Okay, so guess what? So they draw our blood. They never tell her. They just did a CBC and a CMP. So she comes back in thinking that we had repeat blood work, and I sit down and I. Sh you think I'm you think I'm not going to show her this letter? She was fierce. You know this is malpractice, right? They took her blood, told her did the exact same labs and didn't. So she called her up, and there were some words said. Do you ever think she called me? Not, not for this whole mess. Do you ever think she called me? Because then the woman says, listen, let's just do it at your lab. And here's what happens. Guess what happened to her antibodies? Last time, they were at 422, 442. Now, within six months, they're already down to 255. I don't like to test. I like to what? Thank you. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, really? And no joke. So I sent my own letter back. See what I'm saying? And I was nice about it. I was very nice about it. Because here, I'm saying, listen, because I said, listen, here, here's her pre and post testing. For example, if you really care about this patient, you will call me so I can show you what we did. And guess what? I will send her back for you. So you, guess what? That's not a joke. I will say this uh, publicly. You know how much money I make in labs? You know how much money they make in labs? Thousands. Okay, so I, I said, listen, I'll send them back to you. I want you to do labs. You know what I'm saying? That's fine. I don't care. But the idea is this. But her thing was this. Her big thing was what? Insurance company scrutiny. Think about that. They didn't care about it. She was worried about the insurance company going, why are you doing a retest? They never go down. Because in medical viewpoint, if there's no drug for it, why would they retest? Does that make sense? Because it never goes down. But then what? The thyroid does what? Because damage and damage, damage. And eventually there will be a fire and they'll have to do what to it? Cut it out. Okay. Oh, now, this is a good one. Everybody grab the letter here. I, I, I'm probably going to get sued for this, but I'll just say it anyways. I scratched off the top name. This came from Endocrinology and Associates from Green Bay. Okay? <laughs> Sue me. Okay, it's fine. That's what I got malpractice for. Because I've never been sued. Anyways, but, uh, but here's one thing. Now, look at this. So this lady comes in. She's sitting in my waiting room. I was sitting in my office that way. I was going through new patient consultation with her, stuff like that. And she actually had all this done. I'm like, holy, holy freaking cow. I'm like, where'd you get this done? She's like, well, I heard you speak. Well, I'm thinking, she's a patient, so I'm thinking like you guys, okay? So all of a sudden, I'm going through everything. I'm going through the whole thing. Go, and, they, and all of a sudden, no joke, after about our appointment, going through her stuff, and, and she, was, she was telling me a story that when she heard me speak, she went and get the labs the way I taught her to properly test them. And then she went and she got them, and she saw them. She put them away in a, in a um, desk for two weeks. She didn't have an appointment for two weeks. I said, why do that? She goes, I saw how bad it was. Now, I'm like, okay. So I looked at it, going through it. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, wow, it's pretty awesome that you had these done and everything. So I was going through, telling her, okay, here's what we're going to do. Here's our plan, stuff like that. So draw your blood work. And all of a sudden, she starts crying. I'm like, did I say something? What's up? You know? And she goes, well, doc, I just wanted to find out if you were real or not, if you knew what you're talking about. She goes, I'm a medical doctor. And she, she goes, I can't get up. She goes, I'm 52 years old. And they keep telling me I'm what? You know what's really funny? Let's do this. You see how when they just did the normal hormones? Look at this part right here. 
her blood levels show that her thyroid gland is functioning has what? Improved. Now, remember that, because here's what happens. Go down two paragraphs, or three paragraphs down here. It goes from, hey, you've improved, but then when she tests it properly and got the antibodies, it says, you had a blood test of, for evidence of the immune system affecting the function of the thyroid gland, okay? And it goes through all, the antibodies are linked to destruction of your gland. So how can you be improved until now you have destruction? Because why? Because then they're normal when they put their, their writing up of it, hey, hormone levels are good, so you have good function. All of a sudden they go down here, you have destruction, it gets better. The elevated levels show that the evidence, of the evidence for destruction of your thyroid gland is Hashimoto's disease. Now think about that. So they went from you got good, in, good function to now you have an autoimmune disease. You see what I'm saying? See how conflicting it is? Now, if you can't drug it, what do they do? Let's go to the second page. It says right here, let's, let's read the last paragraph. At this time, it does not appear that you need treatment. Hey, I can't make this stuff up. Okay? Yeah, your thyroid's being destroyed, but there's nothing we can do right now. But what we can do is wait till it gets bad enough, and then we'll cut it out. I know, trust me. If I, if I was just telling you these stories, you'd be like, Doc, you're a pretty good storyteller. I tell you, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of fun here all day long. You know what I'm saying? Because people come in with the most horrific stuff and all their stories, and then the cool thing is when we start rebuilding their house, what happens? They get better. Okay? Now, so here's what happens. When you look at the whole thyroid, what can happen with those antibodies, there can be molecular mimicry, which means what? Things that can trigger that autoantibody. What's that number one thing, guys? That's why gluten and thyroid are eh, eh, eh. Remember, guys, do yourself a favor. I'm not a generalized person as far as like what to do, but no way should I ever touch gluten. See what I'm saying? It's inflammatory. Get it out of your diet. It will trigger an autoimmune response quicker than anything that way. So just don't eat it. Get rid of it. Get it out of your diet, okay? Number two, infections. Remember we talked about those things that can trigger the immune system? Infections. Now, also two heavy metals. Here's the cool part. We don't guess we what? So this woman came in, so I did a stool test. Wait, you did a stool test to check out her thyroid? Yeah, because she had that infection that was leading to the demise of her thyroid. It's positive. Now you say, Doc, how'd you figure out it was an infection? That's what I'm good at. You know what I'm That's my job, to figure out what's going on. That's why you need a doc, a, a carpenter, to take care of you. You know what I'm saying? Because why? Because if this woman wouldn't have got a poop test, she would never figure out her thyroid was bad. Do you think they'll ever correlate that? How how do how Dr. Flynn make your, your thyroid better? I took a poop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> See, so what happens is this, going through the process, you gotta figure out what's going on with each person that way. And you know what's the sad part is this? See how old this child was? 16 years old. You know what's really funny? I'm 38 years old. Remember when I was a kid? Who got sick? Grandma and grandpa? Now what happens? Within a short generation of within 30 years, what happens? Kids are actually becoming sicker than a dog. You know what I'm saying? Sicker than ever can be. And we're just doing what? We're on the same path. As we're, and guess what's going to happen? It's getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Because what? What's wrong? Because their thinking is wrong. Everybody's taught to think like a fire department. Okay? And if I got to spend the rest of my life with all of our offices, no joke, wellness ways are going to be popping up all over the country. We already have them doing it that way. Because doctors are coming and say, listen, I love the way you practice. Good. Let's get you them to think differently, get people out there to think and actually then practice differently that way. Now, one other, one other good value. This is called the thyroid binding globulin. Now, ladies, let me ask you a question. Have you know any women that ever suffer from endometriosis, cysts, or anything like that? Yes. What hormone goes high? Estrogen. Okay? Now, so if estrogen now floods into the system, the body says, listen, I got tied up, so I don't have to put cancer. Well, one of those binding globulins, or let's call it a CAR, is guess what? This test measures the amount of proteins that blood that transport thyroid hormone in your cells. So here's what happens. If you saw... Well, there's two types of hormones we have for free T, or excuse me, for T3 and T4. We have those two, and they can be free and available. Well, what happens is this. When it's bound to a protein, it's called a thyroid globulin. Think of it like a car. We're going to take, your, let's say you're the hormone. We're going to jump in a car. We're going to go to where we need to go. Okay? That's what a binding globulin is. When estrogen levels go up, it makes the binding globulin go up. So there's less available hormone to be readily available. Okay? So let me say that again. If you have high estrogen levels, it's going to now affect the amount of globulin that goes up, and that's going to entrap the thyroid hormone in the car. Does that make sense? So therefore, it won't be active, and you can't use it. So even if you had normal thyroid levels, normal T3, normal T4, if this is high, 
it's going to deplete it from working. Okay? Now, things that raise the TGB. Number one, estrogen. What's number two, guys? What's number two? Now you say, why do I say it's a male problem? How can that how can it affect males? How can birth control affect males? What's that? Yep, it's the number one thing in our water supply. I taught that during our detox process. But I'm going to teach you something a little bit more intense. Yes, we get in our water supply. But can you measure hormones through different tissues of the body? Like blood, yes? Like saliva, yes? Like urine. Yeah, you can measure it when based on what you're trying to measure. So when a woman takes birth control pills, guess what happens? Is it evident in her saliva? So let me ask you a question, husbands. Have you ever kissed your wife when she was taking birth control? If you have, you've enjoyed it. See what I'm saying? Any, any exchange of fluid. You have sex with them, guess what? You get it. Exchangeable by fluid. So here, that's why I always tell people, I never have to talk to a woman to get off birth control. All I have to do is talk to the husband. <laughs> saying, you enjoying that birth control? Because that's why you are. You know? Now, increased insulin. So can sugar affect us? Yes. Hormone replacement therapy. But what's this one down here? Soy. Wait, soy actually causes goitrogens, causes goiters. Why do we think soy is a health food? Does anybody know why? What are two foods subsidized by the government? Soy and corn. Guess what? Soy is a goitrogen that's damaging and massively damages our thyroid. That's why people who are vegans and stuff like that actually eat a lot of soy and they do what? They destroy their thyroid. That's why they have so many thyroid problems that way. And corn, okay? I always tell people, you know our body was never meant to digest corn, right? You know I can prove it to you? Yeah. <laughs> what, happens in April, what happens in August? You have corn in the cob, right? You eat it, next day you take a poop, what do you have? Corn off the cob. You know what I'm saying? It's not meant for us to digest. Now, here's the one thing. Did you know that on levothyroxine, on WebMD, on the contraindications, it says you're not supposed to have what? Do you know why? Now is it down to the thyroid, it also down to the medication. And that's why it's... So here, so has your doctor ever said, I'm going to prescribe you levothyroxine, and, and Miss Jones, I want to make sure that you have no soy products. Did they ever say that to you? No. Because they don't even know their own contraindications, their own medication. Why do I know them? Do you see what I'm saying? Because I'm interested in figuring out what's wrong with you and why you're going. Now think about that. If you take levothyroxine or Synthroid, you can't have any soy products whatsoever. Even by who? Does this say Dr. Flynn, MD? See, I point that out because people are like, oh, once again, it's Dr. Flynn. No, I'm just the one that jerk enough to get up and say, listen, you're wrong. You know what I'm saying? It is. It's not an arrogant statement. I'm sticking up for who? I don't do this stuff. I'm not on levothyroxine and synthroid. I'm never have to be. Because why? Because I'm making the right choices because I know better. Why do you think I have seminars like this? How much did it cost you guys to come here tonight? Nothing. Because if I can give you the information, then you can be empowered by it that way. It's your choice, not mine. I'm just here to help you along. Okay? Oh, yes. Yeah. So what do we do? <laughs> so what do we do? Okay, that's the big thing. Uh, I actually sell guns on my first amendment. Okay. No. <laughs> no, here's what happens. Oh, a second amendment, nothing. Uh, here's what I want you to understand is this. What can we do? Well, what's, what's our old model, guys? We don't guess, we test. So what should we start with? What kind? Don't be so, don't go out to, don't run out and spend thousands of dollars yet. Okay. Let me show you something. You ever heard of their me taking your temperature? No, but let me show you how they get this wrong. They even get this wrong, okay? They say, listen, if you have low temperature, you have a low thyroid. That's not true. That's not true at all. Here, you want me to blow your guys' mind away a little bit? You really want me to confuse you, okay? And I want you, I, this is one thing I want you to really think about, because I'll teach you this. Do you want a high metabolism or a low metabolism? Wrong. You'll die fast. If you run a car at 80 miles an hour or 45 miles an hour, which one lasts longer? See, you want to be able to keep that metabolism at a very good, steady, low rate. You think, well, no, I'll get fat. No, no, you won't. No, you won't. You see, it happens you want high metabolism because you want to lose weight. And you're supposed to fluctuate when you're a little younger. But as you get older, you want to create what? Long life. And if you have high metabolism, you're going to die early. Okay? So what you want to do is this. So when you do a basal temperature test, now, here's what you do. You get up in the morning. You have a thermometer right next to you. You know why? Because if you get up, what automatically happens to your temperature? It goes up. Here, remember our blood pressure? Do you know how you're supposed to measure blood pressure? Laying down for 15 minutes. Whoever does that in the medical office? 
they sitting up, so automatically by it's called Reglan's test. You sit up, your blood pressure is supposed to go up. So I tell people I can make your blood pressure just by meeting me. Come down. Just take it properly. It's kind of it's done diagnostically that way. So now, so let's do this. So let's say, for example, we do our home temperature test. And let's just put like nine. What's, what's our normal temperature? No, it's not. Since when are we all the same? See how you fall in that trap? We're not all supposed to be 98.6. You tell me a person next to you is supposed to have the same one. So let's just go 99 down to 70, which you would be dead, OK? So what you want to see, for example, if you're a guy, we're going to start with guys. You want to see that consistency, OK? Because why? Because that we know then there's multiple organs correlating to keep that basal temperature very straight across. You follow me on that? So here's what happens. What happens if all of a sudden I see this with temperature? So here's day one, two, three, so all the way to 30, and we see this. Ladies, I know this is you most of the time. What does that tell you? It's not a bad thyroid. It's a bad adrenals. Do you know why? So the thyroid is right here, and all of a sudden it can't keep up. So adrenals say, adrenaline rush. What happens if you get adrenaline rush? What happens to your temperature? Oh, then I'm fatigued. Adrenaline rush, oh, I'm fatigued. Oh, adrenaline rush. Do you think that'll get you to wear out? You know what I'm saying? Now, that's significant. Now, ladies, now that's guy. Now, ladies, guess what happens? Here's your temperature. Do you know why? Thank you. It follows your menstrual cycle. So what happens is your first two weeks and your second two weeks of your cycle, and the second week, progesterone goes up. Progesterone, was that involved in our stress hormones? Yes, it was. And progesterone goes up, and then it comes back down. So what happens is if you see this, so here we had a woman come in not just maybe a couple months ago. She's from Upper Michigan. And look at this. Here is her mapping of her temperature from the first day of her cycle to the end. Here was the second month. What happened? Now it started to come up. You know what I'm saying? So her adrenals is going, holy crap, stressed out. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm crabby. Oh, I'm really down. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> see, so what happens, what you're really doing with that is you're monitoring, yes? Yeah, we're good. here, if you're metapausal, here's what you do. You have it like who? You're like the guy. You know what I'm saying? You're like the guy. So if you're jumping around, well, this woman's cyclic. She can't get pregnant. Actually, this is not a joke. This woman right here, she'll actually be down here on Saturday. This woman right here, for example, her life's changed massively in three months. Um, no joke, she was allergic to her husband. She actually reacted to sperm, and I'm not joking. And she brought pictures. She swelled her eyes up like crazy and stuff like that. This is what I see. Not a joke. Imagine somebody comes in and says, Dr. Flynn, I'm allergic to my husband's sperm. Do you see what I'm saying? You know the first thing I did there? Test her for allergies. And guess what? Found out she was allergic to what? To what her husband was eating. It comes out in your sperm. And guess what happened? She was allergic to it. It's not a joke. It's kind of weird, isn't it? So I know it's kind of fun all day here, isn't it? <laughs> OK? But this is the stuff I see, isn't it? and this is her. Now the cool thing is, guess what? Within three months, she's no longer allergic to her husband. You think her husband's happy? Not, she'll be here on Saturday. Come meet her. She's just, it was, it was amazing. And then we actually start. And guess what she also did? They, they haven't had a child yet. So now it happens. She said the first time this past month, she was so excited because her ovulation kit for the first time became positive. Now, here's a question for you. Did I make her hormones go back to normal? Or did they always want to be normal genetically? See, you know, the thing is this. If you cut your finger, do I heal you? No, that's what we're genetically programmed for. You're not genetically programmed for disease, guys. No matter how much BS they tell you that. We're genetically programmed for vitality, health, normal, normal blood sugar, normal what? Blood pressure. Do you follow me? And if it comes off, they just throw water on it. I'm trying to find out why. Okay? So this is, this is simple. So guys, guess what? You can actually test this yourself. That's why I tell everybody to start. Because if you now see this, you know there's some disruption. Now, there we go. Here's some of your most important blood work. Now, as you can see on here, there's several levels that I did not even talk about. Did not even talk about why? Because it would take me three to four hours to go through this whole seminar, okay? And not everybody gets all of these. You follow me? Now, some of you guys get all of them. Some of you guys here have had them, and you're here because they were abnormal, okay? But here's a question for you. From what you started with and what you knew about the thyroid, do you think that TSH and T4 are a ridiculous view of the thyroid? It is. And they went because of their paradigm and the way they use healthcare and the way they think, they will never figure it out, ever, 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 ever. It's sad. 
It's very sad because if you don't, this way I do, okay? So I like iodine, just to let you know. So for example, it's one thing is this. I'm a big person with iodine because iodine is an essential mineral. You need it. Now, ladies, yes, you need it for the thyroid, but what else do you need it for? What's, what second tissue needs most in? Ovary, breast, and uterus. Now, scientifically, if you go low, yes, it's going to affect your thyroid. You can't produce T3 and T4, but what else happens? Fibrocystic what? We have a young lady from Chicago. She was 29 years old. Her breasts were so full of cysts that they're even hard to touch and actually sore to touch. Do you think that young lady, you know, and not being disgusting, enjoyed having her breasts touched? They're extremely painful, okay? Now, what do you think we did with her? We didn't guess, we tested. And what do you think her iodine levels were? Now, do you think she has normal female hormones? Do you think she has normal adrenal hormones? No, so as we started to repair and regenerate those, guess what happened to her, her breast tissue? It went back to normal. Who said so? Her OB. They did also on back on it, and they saw a scar tissue going away. Now here, there's my, there's my copy. Iodine replacement for what? Fibrocystic breast disease, okay? See, if I would just say, okay, how can I naturally treat this? I didn't. I said, what did the plant what? Need. See, stop looking at the plant and try the drug and surgery. Let's find out what that plant needed. Oh, I love my copsy. Now, detoxification. This is very important. Very important because most of your T4, not all of it, but most of your T4 converts to T3 where? In our liver. So toxic liver stops that. You remember that, tw that 26 year old I showed you T4 was normal, but the T3 was low? Because she had liver problems. She was toxic. So that's why, for example, now we talked about an x ray. Look at the amount of inflammation, the GI inflammation this person has. Stomach swollen that way. Then we start to detoxify them. See how it starts to clear up? We don't guess, we test, but we love retesting it. Just like even the thyroid. You can see some of those calcium facials start to go away. Now, some of you guys, I know two of you guys here, I said, listen, some of it may never go away. Because why? Long-term damage. You follow me on that? I'll be honest with you. You know, there's some people I've gotten off all of their medication, and some people, they're, all, they're on some of it, okay? But the nice part is because some of them had permanent disruption, I couldn't, okay? I tried, tried massively, but they had a little permanent damage. And I'll tell you that. I'll be honest with you right away. Then you're pretty damaged. We're going to make you do really well, but you might have to take a little bit of medication. And they didn't care because they were doing a lot better. Okay? So, ah, natural thyroid support. I know you guys were going to ask for it, so I had to give you. What's number one, guys? Now, Durham, the one thing is this. I like food habits. That's one thing I'm big on. Habits are everything that way. I've harped on some of you guys for years about that. I mean, listen, good habits. And I love smoothies. Because you can put, guess what? Has anybody ever tried kelp or kale? No. Ugh, tastes horrible. Oh, it tastes like somebody, you know what I'm saying? It's like, remember, I'm that cat at the beginning of the, the, the seminar, right? It's chewing on that leaf. It's like, ugh, I can never eat it. But I can make anything into a smoothie or a cookie. Okay, so, some of you guys know that. Okay, but the idea is this. So I love smoothies. But look at selenium. For some of you guys that know, one of my favorite products on the planet is what? Mushroom stuff, some of the highest selenium. So nuts and seeds. Ashwagandha. See, these are all great things, actually, for our thyroid that way. The cool thing is a lot of food sources on there, so I would teach you what you want to do, okay? Here, I love this. Look at this one right here. Coconut products. Who doesn't love coconut? You know, phenomenal things for that. Wonderful things. Now, guys, this is, like even this video today, we'll eventually put this on our YouTube channel, so you can watch anytime you want. Um, I actually, if you, when you checked in, make sure you check in, because that's how you'll get the notes. Okay, see, actually, who's recording this right now will actually send you the notes for it that way, okay? But watch our videos on there, okay? Guess what? Get this video and give it to your doctor. Not a joke. Why? What did I teach you tonight? Did I teach you Dr. Flynn theory, or did I teach you anatomy and physiology tonight? That's it. See, I just taught you how the body works. That's it. And see, it, it, see that's why they can never argue with you. They can only attack me personally. You follow me on that? And I've heard it. Dr. Flynn's crazy. It's this, 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 his theory. No, it's not. Here, here's anatomy and how it works, and this is what happens. And I said, and if you want to, have them call me. Because why? Because my concern is not me, it's who? You guys that way. Because if you do things right and get things back to normal, get tested properly and follow the right directions, you're going to be able to repair and regenerate. It may take time. Some of you guys want things overnight. Guess what? Go to your medical doctor because I will disappoint you. I will. I'll disappoint you. And you'll even, sometimes you even hang the hat. Doc, I want to be good in, in this many months. Good. And guess what? You're setting yourself up for, for failure. You know what's really funny? 
You've been destroying yourself for 20 years. You want me to fix you in two months. What's that? Yeah, it is. You know, and they're wrong. We can get you there. But it's a team effort that way. And then I tell people, that's why I'm kind of always, you know, I'm so big on people going, you're, you know, what you eating? Because I don't want you destroying yourself through the process that way. Now, so those are our websites. Those are our things. Now, the cool thing is this. What I want you to understand about the whole process is that's what it is. Now, the one thing that when we look at a person, we go, okay, listen, like the doctor that came and I showed you that sheet where she was like, hey, I heard you speak and she went and got all those labs. I, you know, you can do that. Take, take the things and go get them done. I don't care where you get them done. Now, the only bad part is this. I can't guarantee that those are things that are wrong. You follow me? When I saw a 16-year-old when I did a poop test on him, how did I know that that was affecting his thyroid? Because that's what I did to investigate what was wrong. That's what a carpenter does. He finds out why the fire got, came in the first place. Okay? So understand, but do I encourage you to look up those labs and take them to your doctor and have them done? Now, here's what happens. I've taught you totally different than think different. You'll never go back. You follow me on that? You can never go back and think that way. But here's what happens. When you go back to your doctor or you talk to a friend, they're going to think and talk to you in what way? Like the fire department. So you're going to look totally retarded to them. You're going to be like, okay, you're, you know, what happened to you? You're not thinking straight. You're wrong. Do you see what I'm saying? So understand. Because why? Because you're thinking now from a total carpenter viewpoint and you're asking different questions and your doctor will even argue with you or he'll get frustrated with you and get mad. That will happen. Okay? That's why when you look at all the letters I get, I wish I should put a couple of those up, you know, really saying some nasty things about me. You know what I'm saying? And it's not on the care. It's just a, no joke. I had one, actually, where, once again, a kid had a vaccine reaction that way. Thyroid was destroyed. They're like, he even put in there, you are killing people from what you're teaching them. Really? I'm not the one to inject them with a neurotoxin and cause them damage. You follow me? So what I want you guys to understand is this, is what the Wellness Way really stands for, for all of our offices across the country, is this. Is we're just here to give you information so you can make your own decision. That's it. We don't play doctor here ever. We say, hey, listen, here's what you need. And we'll go through all the testing with you to find out what's going on. 